Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Kelly Speaks. It's April 1st, 2020, and I'm super excited to have my friend, Dr. Chess Trimble, with us today. Hi, Jess. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. She has We Love Telemed, and you can see it in the tip scroll, www.welovetelemed.com. And she's been doing all things telemeds for quite a few times, uh, times, years. Jess, do you want to tell us just a snippet about the, what you do to the audience? Sure. So uh, I'm a, a classically trained veterinarian, um, but in the last couple of years, I've sort of been sucked into this tech space and really fell in love with telehealth and telemedicine. And so my my mission right now, especially while we are dealing with this pandemic, is trying to share my experience of creating and implementing telemedicine systems and veterinary practices with everybody who will possibly listen so that we can get all of these practices up and running smoothly during these crazy, crazy times. Which I love, absolutely love. So um, we're gonna move into the news item of the day, which today is gonna focus on telemed, telehealth. Um, so you have a really actually interesting one, Jess. What, what do you have for us today? Yeah, I've got a, a weird one. So we've been having to watch the uh, Veterinary Medical Board announcements as well as the announcements that are coming from state and federal levels when it is in regard to veterinary client-patient relationship laws. And so um, federally and with our state governors, they're tending to be much more liberal than our veterinary medical boards are. And this one happened very recently that surprised me. The governor of Pennsylvania announced that anyone who has a license in good standing in any state uh, can give telemedicine in the state of Pennsylvania. So that means me, I don't live in Pennsylvania. I'm not sure I've even visited Pennsylvania. I do not have a Pennsylvania license, but legally right now I could provide telemedicine to a dog in Pennsylvania. Unfortunately, for those people who are licensed in Pennsylvania, the state veterinary medical board is actually who controls what you can and cannot do. And they say that you cannot provide telemedicine without a valid BCPR. And so there's this very strange thing happening where veterinarians in the state of Pennsylvania cannot provide telemedicine without a VCPR, but veterinarians outside of the state of Pennsylvania with no license can provide it. Um, it's very confusing and a lot of veterinarians have reached out to the state board to ask questions and that's exactly what they've said is that the governor says it can happen, there's nothing we can do about it, but if you are a Pennsylvania licensed veterinarian, you still have to obey the veterinary medical board rules. So this is the first time that we've seen um, a state governor really provide such broad and also vague rules around veterinary telemedicine, um, but it's not superseding the veterinary state board's decision. So it's a, it's a very strange time for veterinary practitioners out there trying to figure out just what it means to have a VCPR now, because I believe oh, there's five to seven states now that have totally rolled their VCPR laws over. I think in, in Oregon and South Carolina, you can um, establish an electronic VCPR. Uh, but the moral of the story is to just keep an eye on these emergency declarations. Changes to VCPR laws are happening every single day right now, uh, which is very interesting and also very frustrating for the people on the front lines who are trying to provide great medical care to their pets in this crazy, crazy time. because um, getting the news out there, right? Like information. And so we, of course, will have you back to give us the latest news in telehealth because these laws are changing. But while the world's figuring out the rules, um, you have a couple of tips for us today because it depends. You know, the world is not the same for everybody right now. In some areas of the United States, there's certain rules in other parts of the United States, there's different rules. And so veterinarians are seeing different streams and flows of patient care. So what do you have for us today for both extremes, really busy people and maybe a little bit slower hospitals? Uh, absolutely, it's it's a frustrating time out there. Like you said, it's no, not one size fits all. A lot of the specialist hospitals are saying that they are excessively slow. Um, you know, a, a veterinary oncologist can't provide chemotherapy because they don't have the PPE to be able to provide those services. Um, whereas on the flip side, we're seeing house call practitioners are exploding with requests for appointments because nobody wants to leave 
their homes to go out. And so we're seeing, you know, total dichotomy here of extremely busy and extremely slow practices. So if you're one of the really slow ones, one of the things that I loved to do with telemed uh, when we were doing it very heavily in our own practice was to utilize our assistants and CSRs and RBTs to create client engagement and utilize telehealth uh, just to reach out. So this was, you know, if, if we could go through our practice management system and say, show me all the old cats, you know, every cat over the age of 12, we would send them all information about kidney disease. Um, or, you know, if it's, you know, puppies less than six months, often you can sort of query your practice management softwares to figure that out. And so you can find these collections of animals and send them out messaging just to keep them engaged in your practice and help them understand that you're here for them in this time, even if they're not coming into their, your practice right now, you can still provide value to them that's going to build trust and help improve their relationship so hopefully when this is all over, they're going to be a lot happier coming back and they'll remember you because you helped give them tips during this time. So we did great with educational materials, especially if we could find a way to personalize it to a pet's medical condition or breed. Um, and, you know, we would also have our RBTs just do a mass check in. If we didn't have appointments for a morning, we would sit one of them down and say, check on every patient that has a chronic disease and just reach out and see how they're doing. And our clients were so incredibly grateful that even if this was a stable patient, we still cared enough to check in, even if they weren't reaching out to us. And it meant a lot to them, and it really helped to build that trust and relationship. Um, and then if you are one of those practices that is just overwhelmed and far too busy, you need to figure out how to use your CSRs and assistants and nurses um, to really create this flow within telehealth. Because ideally, um, your nurses and assistants should be taking on the brunt of, of the telehealth and they can. It's amazing. They do fantastic jobs. So don't forget about your paraprofessional staff to help to reach out to clients, to triage those cases, to get history, and just to make the whole thing a lot more smooth. And then lastly, something that really helps, um, especially if you're super busy, is reaching out to your clients proactively to provide them uh, telehealth tips. You know, here's a link to our platform, um, and here are sort of the best practices. I'm hearing from a lot of veterinarians right now that they, they get that telehealth appointment, they think everything's going to be great, and someone sits down and they say, well, you know, how's your cat? And they're like, oh, well, he's, he's under the bed, I couldn't get him out. So you need to, to reach out to your clients and set those expectations of if we're going to have a telemedicine visit, you need to be in a well-lit area, you should send me photos and videos ahead of time that are not blurry, um, again, that are well lit, that you have good Wi-Fi because we all know video calls don't always do uh, very well over poor Wi-Fi um, and making sure that devices are charged. I heard from a vet yesterday that they got halfway through a telemedicine visit, someone's computer died. And so it's those really simple little things that you would think are common sense. Common sense is not common, <laughs> unfortunately. So really just reach out, be proactive to set those expectations um, and it will help your telehealth systems go that much more smoothly and be that much more effective. Wonderful. That's awesome. And it's true, right? You always have to check the plugin to see if it works first. Yeah. <laughs> is it charged? Does it, is it working? You know, that sort of thing. It, it's more often times than not. It, yeah, it, you know, if we're focused on, oh my goodness, my dog has an ear infection, I'm checking to see if my computer's plugged in, I'm worried about my dog, but that little change is going to ruin the whole experience. Right, exactly. So speaking of experiences, we always end the broadcast with marketing messages to self. Like, what are we telling ourselves to keep ourselves upbeat through this time? Because it's a marathon, not a sprint. And yesterday, since I'm a gardener, I was talking about Victory Gardens. You know, those started in World War II to create extra food for people, but also, up, you know, uplift their moral health because it's fun seeing things grow out of the ground. And I know you're a gardener, so what are you planting this year that's making you excited? Well, first off, I would not say that I'm a gardener. I attempt to garden, but really, unless it has fur, I'm not very good at keeping it alive. <laughs> uh, but I'll show you really quickly. I'm super excited. I have my little garden in my office. And so you can see 
corn growing and my various uh, things. So this is my my vegetable garden at about three days old right now. So it's very exciting. <laughs> it is very exciting. And I love that smile on your face because that's, that's, we need, we need up moments in the dark moments, right? Now, if only I could keep them alive. That's the kicker and keep my cats from eating them. <laughs> There's always that, right? My dog's already gotten into my seedlings once, and I'm like, oh, my God, please make sure that one wasn't poisonous. Um, so, you know, there's always that, right? So, well, thank you, Jess. And we will certainly have you back on future episodes because telehealth, telemed is all changing all the time. Right now it's a very fluid, fluid environment. So we will see you back shortly. And, again, if people have questions for Jess, please go to welovetelemed.com. She is consulting right now and offering advice to medical practices on how to navigate telehealth if you're new to it, or even if you're an experienced user, maybe there's something you need a little tweaking for, she's the lady for you. So we'll see you soon, Jess. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Bye.